Fire investigators continue to look into the cause of a fire in Maple Grove that killed a woman in a wheelchair. Firefighters were called out to a home near 67th and Xenia Lane around 7 p.m. Thursday. When they arrived, flames had already spread throughout the house. Delane Cleveland has more on the tragic circumstances. The fire conditions upon our arrival, just anybody that was inside that house, they weren't going to be able to survive. Charred remains are the only thing left from a place that a Maple Grove woman once called home. Neighbors reported the fire around 7 o'clock Thursday night and first responders arrived within minutes. First arriving police and fire uh, five minutes later found heavy fire pushing from the front of the house. Uh, so the house had a lot of fire well involved throughout. Fire Chief Tim Bush says the flames were so heavy, the first arriving crews couldn't enter the home until they fought the fire from the outside. The resident, who's a longtime Maple Grove resident, didn't survive the fire. They were able to locate her, but just the fire conditions on our arrival, it was not a survivable situation. Chief Bush says the homeowner was an elderly woman who lived alone with her dog and needed a wheelchair to get around. These situations are traumatic, not just for the, the responders, but also for the neighbors and you know the friends and relatives that, that know this person. The chief says this incident was a first for the city. To my knowledge, this is our first fire fatality for the city of Maple Grove. We've had fires that had death involved, but the deaths weren't caused by the fire. He says help will be available to any of the first responders involved. We've made sure that the, the crews, especially that first crew that made entry, they know that uh, it's okay to talk about this. Despite the devastating circumstances, investigators say there was one positive to come out of all this. They were able to save the woman's dog. Reporting in Maple Grove, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. Meanwhile, a late November fire at a strip mall in Crystal has been ruled arson, and Crystal Police are asking the public for help to solve the crime. We have some leads and we, we have a direction that we're going, but we believe that there's probably people out there who know more and we'd love to have that information. If you drive by the strip mall on Bass Lake Road, you'll notice all the businesses are shuttered. Fire investigators believe the fire started at the back of the building. The fire did enough damage that the building could be a total loss. And that particular building is, is all small businesses, so you know we, we really would like to get this solved because small businesses are the heart of this community. The person or persons responsible for the arson will face felony charges. If you have information, call Crystal Police. The Brooklyn Park Fire Department is preparing to do something it's never done before. Brooklyn Park will start a Firefighter Cadet Academy. It will be similar to the one in Minneapolis or St. Paul where cadets receive paid on-the-job training. It's part of the process to transition from a paid on-call department to a full-time one. The fire chief hopes to pick cadets from a diverse applicant pool with applicants from Brooklyn Park. We want to give residents the opportunity to have a, a career at the fire department. So by coming up with our own academy and training people from the ground up uh, with no prior training or education, we can uh, train them to be a successful Brooklyn Park full-time firefighter. There are informational sessions on the Cadet Academy planned for next week, and we have details on that on our website. State health officials fear this could be a peak year for whooping cough. The bacterial infection, also known as pertussis, was blamed for the death of an infant back in November. Symptoms of whooping cough start with a common cold and can turn into rapid coughs with a high pitch whooping sound. Minnesota Department of Health officials say babies cannot get vaccinated until they're at least two months old. And that's why it's important for expecting moms to get the vaccine. And we've seen that that's really effective at not only preventing um, infants from getting pertussis, but on top of that, uh, from preventing them from being um, getting really sick from pertussis even if they do get it. And so that vaccine that mom gets is actually protecting the baby for that first two months of life. Health experts say only 40 to 50 percent of pregnant women are getting the vaccine. Art comes in all forms and fashions, and you can use almost anything to create it. In Weekend Showcase, Neil personally found one artist who uses the tools nature provides to make her art. Meet Linda Snoffer, botanical printmaker. I use water-based printer's ink to make the plant images in my work. Having never met a botanical printmaker before, I wondered what one did and how they went about their craft. As a botanical printmaker, it means that I am making the 
the foundation of my images are made by putting ink on a plant, pressing that plant onto my prepared surface, lifting off that plant, and what's left behind is the image that you see. Her show at the Robin Gallery is called Off-Road Traverse and is a warm, colorful reminder of what lies beneath the blanket of snow now covering our prairies. I went to the prairie probably six or seven times during the summer and I collected grasses and other kinds of plants. Each time Linda made notes and took pictures to document the type of day it was, blue sky or impending storm, and the colors of the prairie plants from spring to summer to autumn. Most of the pieces are a snapshot of the kind of day Linda experienced at the time she harvested the plants. While this is leaf printing and the basic of leaf printing is very non-complicated, the work that I have is multi-layered and it, it is very complicated, needing to make the background and needing to do the composition and making those compositions using the, the printing process. The process Linda uses is fascinating and you might be interested in a demonstration and discussion she's having on Saturday, January 18th. The exhibit will be up through February 1st. For a Weekend Showcase from Robin Gallery in Robbinsdale, Neil Persley, CCX News. And for more Weekend Showcase stories, check out our website, ccxmedia.org. Armstrong boys basketball team had won eight games in a row after a season opening loss to Hopkins. Second ranked Park Center was looking to bounce back from a loss to Minnehaha Academy. The Pirates without six foot ten inch Dane Danger as they played at Armstrong Thursday. Highlights from the game in transition Park Center's Braden Carrington drops it back to Joshua Brown for a three and the Pirates grab a 15 9 lead 19 points for Brown on the night. Josh Lewis sees an opening and pounces for the steal and breakaway layup. Park Center goes up by 11. They lead 36-27 at the half. But Armstrong plays much better in the second half. Four players touch the ball here as Jake Breitbach drives and sets up Hezekiah Ayawe for the layup. The Falcons are quickly back within four. Ayawe scores 12 points in the game. Park Center pushes the lead again, though. John Grigsby, three, puts the Pirates up 48-37. Armstrong surges from there. Dylan Inniger's three-pointer from the corner ties the game at 53. Falcon fans are fired up. Adam B. would hit some clutch shots down the stretch. A long three gives the Falcons a seven-point lead. B. would scores 20 points in all, and a strong second half carries the Falcons to a 76-73 win over the Pirates. You know, at uh, halftime, coaches told us to keep, keep working. We played. We didn't play our best offensively in the first half, so we knew we were going to start hitting shots in the second half. So we just had to keep working on defense, and we just believed. That's what really, that's what really helped us. We believed. Falcons. Armstrong's next game is against Osseo. As Jay Wilcox reports, a young Orioles team is learning on the fly. The potential is there. It's a matter of learning the nuances of varsity play in the rugged Northwest Suburban Conference for the super young Orioles, who are 5-5 five and five after a loss to Spring Lake Park Thursday. Yeah, I see us getting better each week. We're still working and learning, though, really focusing on our defense, turning into our best offense. I feel like we're getting there, you know, a lot of young guys. So, you know, we had them last year. So this year being like a senior leader, me and Tariq, even though he's injured, we're trying to teach him the way. We're making some silly mistakes that I think uh, veterans would, would typically over, over, you know, kind of compensate on. Uh, but I, I'm seeing small steps, and, and that's the, 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 the progress that we're making at this point right now. An injury to senior guard Tariq Henry hasn't helped, and talented sophomore guard Donald Ferguson is just back from injury. After years of success, the Orioles are getting used to being an underdog, which isn't necessarily a bad role to play. Yeah, it's definitely a little different. Like growing up, you know, you see Osseo is always the big one that everyone wants to beat. But this year, you know, we played Park Center. We held with them in the first half. We felt really good about that. So, I mean, it's definitely a different aspect, but it's still fun. I mean, our goal is to get better and win games. You know, we always want to win games. And we still want to make it to the section championship, you know, come out there and compete. Lessons learned this winter are going to make Osseo a team to watch, maybe even later this season. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. The Orioles play at Armstrong next Tuesday and at Champlain Park next Friday.
The Armstrong Cooper boys hockey team faces two of the Northwest Suburban Conference's top teams, Blaine and Andover, coming up in their next two games. The Wings prep for those teams with a home game against Coon Rapids. First period, the point shot stop. Joshua Essen puts the rebound away for an AC goal. And then Joe Potter slips the point shot home for a 4-1 Wings lead. 36 seconds later, Jack Campion breaks in and scores. He nets a hat trick. Armstrong Cooper glides to a 7-1 win. They are now 7-5-1 this season. A reminder to tune in to live coverage of high school girls basketball Friday night at 7 o'clock on CCX1 as Cooper hosts Benilde St. Margaret's. That game also replays Friday night at 10. For the top prep highlights from the week, tune into our Sports Jam show airing Monday through Wednesday at 3.30, 6.30 and 9.30 p.m. each week. That's all for sports. More news after this.